Bourbon Real Talk. I'm your host, Scott Men. Today we are sitting down in the bourbon basement, and I'm sitting with Opo Fanboy. What's up, brother? What's going on, man? Hanging there like a hair in a biscuit. Jeez Louise. I do like biscuits. I just don't like any hair in it. How do you know? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. You're right. <laughs> How do I know? I do like biscuits and gravy, I bet too. you've had hair in a biscuit and didn't even know it. Probably. Let's change subjects, because I don't like talking about hair in my biscuits. What about b- biscuits with your gravy? I love biscuits with gravy. Me too. Have you ever had bacon gravy? I have. I still prefer sausage gravy, though. Mm, it, it depends. Yeah. Bacon gravy is pretty good. I just like the lumpiness that sausage adds to it when it's all in there, and you know. Where is it? Oh, a little spice. Uh, oh, where's the place where they have bacon gravy on the country fried steak? Oh, what's the place over off Veterans Parkway? Oh, um, Wild Eggs. Wild Eggs. That's the only place I've ever really had bacon gravy that I recall. Although I think I had a uh, a fried pork tenderloin covered in bacon gravy once. It was really darn good. I was going to say, I think I just had some bacon gravy on something like that when I was in uh, Fort Wayne not that long ago. Okay. Fort Wayne is the first place I had my fried pork tenderloin sandwich. It was really good. Really? Have you ever had the Culver's one? No. No. They have a fried pork tenderloin? They do, and it's delicious. It's not as big as the one is, you know, the ones in Indiana because they're like the size of your head. But Right. They're, they're very tasty, though. Gotcha. I get mine with light mayo, some onion, and some tomato, and it's delicious. Now, I do like the fried pork tenderloin at Neal and Patty's in Sellersburg. You know, I've never had it there. It's good. Huh. Now I'm getting hungry. We probably ought to start talking about whiskey. I always get the buffalo burger at Neal and Patty's. Stop. I want to stop talking about food. I'm going to get hungry. I got chili upstairs. You want that? Nope. I'm good. <laughs> Sounds like heartburn. <laughs> It's actually very delicious. Chili always makes me think of heartburn now. Really? I think that's just getting old. It could be, you know. But I could see where that would be the case. I, I, I typically, well, just screw it. We're talking about whiskey and, <laughs> and, and an event. I, what, what, what are we talking about today, Josh? So this past weekend, uh, we put on for one of our nonprofits uh, that we're associated with or involved with or that we support, however you want to say it, the Maker 13 in downtown Jeffersonville. We hosted a an event that was focused around bourbon barrels. Um, our buddy had donated through his business, I want to say 27 or 28 empty barrels. A couple were uh, wine barrels, I think, or uh, sherry barrels. There, there were some random DJ barrels. DJ Jazzy Jasnoff. I think they are all brandy barrels because okay. they all came from copper and kings did they not they did a couple were larger so i wasn't sure what kind of barrel or cask they so really were they probably were a sherry cask or something like that originally but they all had brandy in them at that point so we'll just call them brandy barrels at this point so matt donated through his business a number of barrels to uh, our nonprofit uh, maker 13 we took those barrels and cut up, I don't know, seven or eight of them, uh, cut them into staves, cut them into dog beds, cut them into bars, tables, you name it. My and coffee, the coffee table was my favorite. The coffee table. So I bought that one at the auction. Did you buy that? You lucky dog. I did. I did. So we, we cut up a bunch of stuff, um, put it in, uh, did an event. The event was where you got to come into the the maker space, which is in downtown Jeff. You got to make something. We had a couple of options. You could do bourbon barrel lamps where we had pre-made lamp kits. You could do uh, a bourbon sign that was made out of staves, and then you got to laser etch it. Or you could do a clock, uh, a bourbon clock made out of staves. And, And funny enough, at the end when somebody was wrapping up their clock, you know, they were able to put num- paint numbers, put it on the stave and the clock piece in the middle. Somebody put five o'clock on all of the hours, like Jimmy Buffett. It's five, five o'clock. Five o'clock somewhere. Yeah. That's right. I never would have thought of that because I'm not that creative, but I thought that was a pretty, pretty cool idea. Was it literally all, all of them were fives? Yeah. That's great. They put fives on all of them. So I thought that was pretty fun, pretty cool. Um, anyways. The event was focused around a single barrel that you and I got to go pick over the summer at Starlight Distillery. We picked a bourbon whiskey finished in VDN barrels. So do you want to tell everybody what VDN is? Or I'm going to mess it up, so we'll just let you go ahead and say it. Gotcha. So the Vino de Naranj, which is basically a white wine macerated with oranges, um, is what they finished the bourbon in. And this was a blend, I think, when I talked to Christian a little bit later on, 
It was a blend of a six-year-old bourbon and a four-and-a-half-year-old bourbon is what they used to make this barrel. Okay. So it says four-and-a-half, but they can put older than four-and-a-half in it if that's the age statement they put on it. Correct. It has to be the youngest of whatever is in that blend is what they have to age it by. So bourbon whiskey finished in VD and barrels. Before we went and picked this one, and maybe it was six months before, I had had the rye whiskey finished in VD and barrels. And I was just head over heels on the rye whiskey finished in VD and barrels. And the day we picked this one, I think this was the first one we picked. And I basically looked at Scott and said, that's the one. We're going to get that. And then it aged another two months, two and a half I months. Let's say, yeah, about three months almost. Two or three months after we picked it, it aged a little longer and it just got sweeter. Yeah. So this, this one reigns in at 105.4 proof. Um, remarkable bottle. These finishes that uh, the guys at Starlight are doing are just phenomenal. Yeah, I, I really enjoy them. Um, the VDNs I really, really love. Um, the Urbriana or Ombriana, however you want to pronounce Am- it. Ambriana. Ambriana, yeah. Um, those are great. The cigar blend barrels. Applejack um, brandy. Applejack is really, really good. Um, I'll be honest with you, the only one that I felt like that I've tried that I haven't found one that I thought was a slam dunk was the Calvados, which I think is like a Hungarian wine or something like that. But, and we tried two or three that day. No, the Tokaj is the Hungarian. I don't know what the Calvados is, but anyway, those two were two that we tried, but we couldn't find any of the Calvados that we were really, really crazy about. Um, but the Tokai, I think we found one that we liked, but it didn't win out against the Applejack, which is what we ended up picking for another event we did. Right. This, um, so when you came to the event, you got a swag bag on your way out the door that included a bottle of whiskey. Um, so we focused everything around this bourbon. Uh, we had cocktails there, had a bartender that was uh, Sarah, who was on the show uh, with us a couple weeks ago. Forever Sarah Young or Sarah Forever Young or I, I don't something know. like that. Yeah, I Sarah. got you. Sarah. So, squirrel. Uh, yeah, squirrel. <laughs> squirrel. Um, so we did, she came and did a signature cocktail with us and I think she had, she called it the happy accident that night, uh, which was a, a pretty cool cocktail. Uh, wasn't really focused around the VD and bourbon, but was a neat cocktail. And she had done one previously for us for an event at another nonprofit. So she's cooked up some pretty neat cocktails. Absolutely. That, that, that happy accident was, a. Uh, it was like a apple cider, I got it right here. I just pulled it up because okay. I took a screenshot of it that night. Two ounces of bourbon, one ounce of vanilla simple syrup, three quarter ounces of apple cider, and a half ounce of orange juice. There you go. It was good. It was delicious. And Every, then she kind of ran the outside of the room around with a little cinnamon apple. Everybody that tried it said how much they loved it. So yep. that kind of off topic there, but the VD and bourbon was focused. Uh, everybody that came to the event got to make some stuff, have a good time. Uh, check out the maker space, see all the cool things that we're doing and hear about all the, the neat STEM based things that the nonprofits doing. Right. So let's talk a little bit more about maker 13, what they do, what it's about, all those type of things. I know, I know we had John on or we had talked about it before like a year ago, right? It was probably about a year ago, but you know, so the way I understand it and, 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 and correct me, cause I know I'm going to get it wrong a little bit, but Basically, the maker space is, is an opportunity for folks if they want to start a business or they just want to learn something about something that, from woodworking to laser cutting all the way over to welding, that they can go in there, take a class, learn about it. And then if they want to like rent space or like pay like some kind of a fee or a membership due or something like that, then they can come in and make things on those type of machines after you take the class. It's kind of like having a membership to a gym like the YMCA that you would pay a monthly membership. Uh, you get a certain number of hours that you can come and use equipment with that membership and there's different levels to do, but uh, you can come in, you can learn to use the lasers. And, you know, every time I hear lasers, I think about the Austin powers movie where they're talking about lasers. Yes. Uh, 3d printers, you know, CNC routers, you got every piece of woodworking equipment you could think of. You got welding, metalworking, you name it, it's there. It's just a really, really neat space. I mean, my favorite thing to do is kind of to watch 
the laser do its thing. It's there's just something mesmerizing about so, the laser etching wood or the laser etching glass or you're kind of like the cat that just likes to sit there and follow the laser beam. I do. I kind of like that. Now, and I don't know why, but it just it, it it's very soothing. I guess would be the best way to put it. Squirrel. But but the coolest piece of machinery is the and I think it's I think it's the CNC router. It's the one where we actually cut the Louisville skylight out of all the bourbon staves. Is that right? Is that yeah, the right one? Yeah, that, that was a really cool thing we did. We cut up a bunch of staves, uh, put them on a backboard, a backer board, and then set it right up on the edge of the CNC router. And we had programmed in the computer. We had drawn up a skyline. We took the Louisville skyline image, dropped it in, took an outline, and then programmed the CNC router to come in and cut the uh, the skyline basically out of the top. You know, the sides were just what yeah. they were. But but it was super neat. Like, you could literally, I could, like, just looking at it, you could see the Aegon Tower. You could see, I guess, what's now PNC Tower, which I always call the Nat City Building. And then you could see the Fifth Third Building in the back right-hand corner. And then you could see the PNC, what I would call traditional PNC Tower on the right-hand side. But it was just really, really neat being able to look at all the major buildings that kind of blend in to, to create the Louisville skylight. So John's really multifunctional like that. He, you know, somebody said, Hey, let's do this. And then, you know, 15 minutes later, he's got it all planned out and done. I probably would have spent six days thinking about it, messing it up five or six times and doing it again. But John knew made it happen and it looked awesome. We did that on a board member build night where the board members were taking apart all these barrels and coming up with ideas to put in our silent auction. Yep. So it was a pretty cool thing. I, I got s- a boring job that night. I just got to run boards through the planner with you. I felt like I had carpal tunnel syndrome after that night. My left wrist hurt from just putting yeah, the board. We made, uh, what did, What else do we make? We cut up one of the barrels. We basically cut a, I'll call it a two by three opening in the front, but that may be a little off size wise. Yeah, probably about right though. Cut an opening in the front. Uh, we drilled into the bands, the metal bands, so that they would stay in place. Uh, we got wolf glass to cut us a piece of glass for a center um, center shelf, cut a couple of staves up. Um, so we put in a piece of glass. Uh, they cut it up, put it in the middle for us. We put a couple staves under to support it. Made a really cool bourbon bar. You got one similar here in your place that I think you made. I did. Uh, what Mine's else? fancy though. It's got lazy Susans in it. We made a coffee table. We, uh, John and I had cut the top off of one of the barrels, uh, basically below, I think it was the second metal band, the second ring. Yep. That sounds and, about right. And we were going to make a dog bed out of it. And we did. We put a, a little dog blanket style thing inside of it. And then we had, you know, two thirds of a barrel left. And we said, what do we want to do? It's like, well, let's make another dog bed. So we turned it upside down cut the other, you know, two rings off and made two dog beds. And then we looked at the middle section of the barrel, which I had not seen anywhere before. Right. We took the middle section of the barrel and we said, you know, that'd be a really cool coffee table if we put a piece of glass on it. Yep. And it was. It was actually my favorite piece of the night. And it, then we went and bought a more expensive piece of glass to put on top of it because you had to have the glass to really yes. it gave it the appeal. So we bought another round piece of glass, put on top of it, and... I just thought the coffee table was the coolest. So I, even though I made it, I, I bid on that at the auction that night. I'm glad it went to a good home, at least. At least somebody that I feel like will appreciate it. Absolutely. Where are you going to sit at in the house? I'm going to put it in the bourbon bunker. The bourbon bunker. And just yeah. set bourbon on top of it? Or are you going to put it in the bourbon bunker, like down by the coffee, by, down by your couches? I think or? I'm going to put it in the middle of the room by my uh, leather chair, my, my drinking chair. I like it. Use it as a drinking chair. That's table. right. So, I, you know, we had a great time, a great event. Everybody that came made something cool. They saw something different. Everybody got to laser etch a rocks glass. And I was a little shocked that the rocks glass etching seemed to bring more joy to a lot of people than others. But I think that's something you can very easily just use in your everyday life and you get to enjoy. You can. And and I'll be honest with you, the reason I was super excited about it is that both my kids have names that you just, you don't find everywhere. So I was able to, I went ahead and just put their names on there. So that way they'd have something, you know, special for themselves. And not that I'm, you know, saying, Hey, go drink a bunch. Cause these are rock glasses, but Hey, it gives them something, a small cup to drink out of drink water out of. Absolutely. Um, my, uh, my youngest, I think that, you know, they actually took theirs upstairs and, and, and are and using it to, uh, 
you know, rinse their mouth out at night. So I got you. It's like whiskey. I rinse my mouth out with whiskey at night. I wish I could, but Becky would not like that. So I just took a drink of the bourbon whiskey finished in VD in barrels, 105.4 proof. So good. And the last night I had poured in an old fashioned, and I typically will not put what I consider nicer bourbon or whiskey in an old fashioned, but this bourbon finished in VDN, it, it makes has a great that, old fashioned. It makes an awesome old fashioned and it really pops that orange flavor. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I could see where that would be the case. Um, matter of fact, I actually had Sarah make me uh, old fashioned out of some VDN that night. Cause I took it to her and I said, here, make this into an old fashioned. So it was pretty solid. Um, it's good. So it's caramel. It's it's you, it, the vanilla is so uh, the van- is so faint. But I tell you what, the orange like the you can really really grab the orange out of this thing. Like, and I don't know how or why. I mean, but it's very very flavor forward. So of the two barrels we picked that we we picked two, we did one for Maker Thirteen. We did one for the Education Foundation. The Ed Foundation barrel was a. Bourbon whiskey finished in Applejack brandy barrels. Yep. It was a little more boozy. I think it was like 111 proof. 111 proof, I think. I think you're right. Um, a little more of a bourbon flavor to it than this one. Even though they're both bourbon whiskeys, it was more of a, it's more of that traditional bourbon, but had a had an aroma on it that was really good. But of the two, this one was by far my favorite. Yeah, I don't disagree. You know, um, I think when we were sitting there, we're like, hey, we want to do two events. You know, we wanted to find, you know, the two best barrels that we could find out of the out of the lot that we tried. And um, I think Matt was more like, hey, this this Applejack is just something super, super special. And I think once we uh, blinded it versus, you know, the other things, it won unanimously against those other things. But the, the VDN, this, this bourbon, we, we, we knew it was one <laughs> immediately when we got into the Rick House and we tried it. 100%. And then we blinded it. Again, I think, or we blinded the the Applejack versus the Calvados. I think Calvados, Calvados, however you pronounce yeah, it. Yeah, that, and I think it was the the, the Tokai, the the Hungarian wine one. But but yeah, the, and it won unanimously. I don't think that it anybody did. voted for it second, even in in that blinding taste test that we did with those other two barrels. So, if if you have not tried a Starlight Distillery Carl T. Huber single barrel, one of these finished barrels, whether it's the Apple Brandy or whether it's the bourbon finished in VDN or Calvados or Amburana the rum finish, buddy. Or rum, the rum finish. Whatever it is, you should try one. I will say that I went back uh, the other night and side-by-sided the bourbon up against the rye VDN. The rye is really good. Really good. I mean, to me, there's just something about a, a finished rye versus a finished bourbon that I just, I just prefer. I just prefer a finished rye over a finished bourbon. Both excellent pours, but I would probably agree with you if I was to blind the two against each other. They're they're all good though. No, absolutely, hundred percent. Anything else about Maker? No, I don't think so, man. Good deal, good deal. Hey, if you want to find Bourbon Barrel Talk, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all those good things. You can also email us at Bourbon Barrel Talk at gmail dot com. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe and the like button, all that good stuff. Um, and if you have any questions, send them in. We're actually getting ready to do an episode all about questions that people or listeners have sent in. We've got some doozies that uh, we're gonna we're gonna tackle, and we'd like to get a few more. So make sure you message those questions into us, and we'll get those answered here uh, pretty soon on one of the upcoming podcasts. This is Scott Nofo Fanboy signing out. Peace. See you.